Hey everybody, this is Chris, the Ancient Scholar, and in this particular video, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some sinus node dysfunction issues that we can run into. Specifically, I'm going to talk about sinus pause, sinus arrest, and something called sinus exit block. These can be a little confusing, and they all result in uh, pauses or cessation of uh, sinus node activity uh, when you analyze the ECG. And so they all kind of look like the same thing, and what's the difference between them? So uh, fundamentally, the difference comes down to how the SA node, the sinoatrial node, is constructed. So the SA node is a little oval uh, area, flat oval area of tissue in the uh, back of the right atrium. Uh, it's about 15 millimeters long, about three millimeters wide, uh, and about a millimeter thick, uh, give or take. Uh, and it, roughly speaking, uh, consists of two different cell types. You've got these P cells, uh, that are the actual pacemaker cells that are firing at whatever their set rate of automaticity is based on uh, neurohormonal uh, integration and interaction. Uh, and then they are surrounded by these so-called T cells. And these T cells are what uh, transmit the impulse out into the atria. Um, so the the firing is happening here in the middle. These P cells are firing. And then that wave of depolarization gets transmitted out of the SA node in, in, into the intranodal uh, pathways of the atria. And so you can have two distinct types of problems when you talk about dysfunction of these cells. The first is that the P cells simply fail to fire, right? And so they don't initiate an impulse at all. Um, and in that case, that's where you're going to get cessation of the sinus node activity, either sinus pause or sinus arrest. The other problem that you can run into is failure of these T cells to transmit the impulses that are being generated by the P cells. So the P cells are firing but that signal is not able to be, is not being transmitted by the T cells. And when that occurs, we call this a sinus exit block. Now, how can we differentiate between these problems on the ECG? Well, it's actually fairly straightforward. If you have failure of the P cells to fire, you're gonna get a sinus pause and the sinus node is going to fail to fire uh, for a period of time greater than two seconds. So you're going to have a pause that is going to be greater than two seconds, all right? And if that pause, that failure to fire, is greater than three seconds, we call that sinus arrest. So sinus pause and sinus arrest. In addition to that, sinus arrest is often terminated by an escape complex. So the pause, the length of time the SA node fails to fire is so long that some other area of the heart begins to fire as the pacemaker. And so you have the very beginnings of an escape rhythm. So in this instance, I have a, a QRS complex without a P wave. I've got a junctional uh, complex and a junctional escape complex that fires. And then that terminates this arrest and you go back into the underlying sinus rhythm until the P cells, cells fail to initiate or fail to fire, and this whole thing happens over again. Now, in the setting of the sinus exit block, the P cells are firing, but that is not being transmitted by the T cells, and so what happens is you're gonna get a pause on the ECG like you would see in sinus pause or sinus arrest, but the pause will be some, if you look at the R to R interval of the normally conducted complexes, the length of that pause is going to be some integer value of the R to R interval. So in this case, one R to R interval can fit into that pause, but it may be two or three, right? Um, and so that's how you can differentiate between sinus pause, sinus arrest, and a sinus exit block. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully that helps if there is any misunderstanding regarding these three sinus node dysfunction problems.